Can I even explain <clears throat> how gorgeous this is? Like when you guys say, ooh, Alaska, why Alaska? Because this. Like you can be somewhere and it's absolutely like God's ultimate beauty and it's like you can feel like you're all by yourself, but you're not. And the people are also really friendly. I hope it, this translates. Sometimes a picture is not as good as being there. Carmen and I'm in Onion in Alaska and today we are headed to the Independence Mine uh, which is up in Hatcher Pass in the Talkeetna Mountains and you can see behind me the glorious, gorgeous, absolutely beautiful Talkeetna Mountains. Whew. And we are up in the Talkeetna Mountains to go to Independence Mine. Whew. I mean, it was a walk. I didn't realize that we we're gonna get out of the car and have to walk a half a mile. We are almost up there to the mine buildings. You guys wanted historical? Whew. You got historical. Gold was discovered in Southeast Anchorage in 1886. The prospectors spread out throughout the Susitna and Matanuska um, basins, nearby creeks and mountains. Hard rock gold, known as Lord, was discovered in the Talkeetna Mountains. Uh, Robert Lee Hatcher was the first to discover and stake a gold claim in the Willow Creek Valley in September of 1906. The Independence Mine was once two mines, the Alaska Free Gold Mine on Skyscraper Mountain and the Independence Mine on Granite Mountain. In 1938, the two were bought and brought together under the one company, the Alaska Pacific Consolidated Mining Company, otherwise known as APC. Just making sure I hit record. In 1941, APC employed 204 men. They didn't notice how many women sure there were women. They blasted close to a dozen miles of tunnels and harvested 34,416 ounces of gold, which was worth in that time, 1941, $1,204,560. If they change it for today's value, it will be $17,208,000. Woo! In 1942, the U.S. designated gold mining as a non, as non-essential, as they had entered into World War II. Gold mining throughout the U.S. came to a screeching halt, but Independence Mine continued to operate because of shellite. Shellite is in those same um, quartz veins along with the gold sometimes, and is a source of tungsten. Unfortunately, this exemption was short-lived because Independence Mine was a very low producer of shellite. The mine was closed in 1943. In 1946, the wartime ban was lifted, but gold could only be sold to the U.S. government for a fixed rate of $35 per ounce. So I guess it was no longer um, conducive to mine it. Independence Mine officially closed in 1951, and in 1974, it entered into the National Register of Historic Places. I mean, if you guys can come up here. It's really gorgeous. I mean, it is so gorgeous. I know I say that a lot, but it really is. It's just, maybe don't come during the winter. I mean, I sunk down up into my thighs multiple times trying to get different shots so that you guys could see what I'm seeing. This is a buried building. Like right there, that's part of a window. Like, they got some heavy snowfall, and while it is a lot cooler up here than it is down in Anchorage, it's still hot when you have to hike half a mile or more. I'm going to zoom in. I hope it stays um, so that you can see. Sorry if it's jumping a little bit. But this is Independence Mine. I think when it closed in 1951, they said that they had mined approximately $6 million worth of gold and remember six million dollars is not like today's six million dollars.
you history buffs that requested some more historic stuff, really enjoyed learning about the Independence Mine, and that if you have a chance, you will come up to Alaska, see it in all of its glory, in all of its beauty. Whew. Finally starting to catch my breath back, but my legs are soaking wet. I am an onion in Alaska. Can you see the buildings behind me? Are the buildings behind me? Uh huh. Oi. Okay. All right, this shot's not gonna work. Oh, my boot! My boot is stuck. I think it's. I think it's an awesome outtake. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.